In this video, we're going to set up Hasura GraphQL backend on Heroku and perform a schema migration based on the schema created under the recipe app management series. Let's get into it. Hello friends, Jermaine here, and I decided to make this tutorial as suggested by Ram. Hasura has actually got some documentation on this as well. So I'm gonna link to that in the description. There's this GitHub repo with the relevant files that we're going to need. So there's the Docker file and there's the heroku.yml file. I'm going to open this Docker file and then I'll copy the contents from this Docker file. And then I'll come back to our project and I'll create a new Docker file at the project root. And let's just paste this in here like so. Um, in fact, I'll get rid of this version number so that it ensures we are using the latest Hasura GraphQL engine image. Okay, I'll save that and then then I'll go ahead and create a heroku.yml file, which is needed when building from Docker files. I'll go back and I'll copy the contents of heroku.yml, which tells Heroku to build from the Docker file. Okay. And then next, what we need to do is create a Heroku app. We're able to create this app within the dashboard, but then I'm going to do this via the CLI. So I'll run Heroku create and the name of our app, which we'll call it recipe management app. And then we'll set the stack option to container because we're running a Docker container. And once we've created our app, we are going to add the Postgres add-on to our app. So we'll run Heroku add-ons colon create. And then we want the Heroku PostgreSQL colon hobby dev, which gives us the free version. And then the app will be our recipe management app. When we go to our dashboard, we see the app added here. And when I click into that and go under resources, we see our add-on over here. Installing this add-on gives us a database URL, which is configured as an environment variable. So back to the app. What we need to do is to commit and push to Heroku. So I'm going to do that now. I'll do git add that and I'll do git commit. And to deploy, we do git push Heroku master. Oh, wait, we need to add Heroku as an origin. So we do Heroku git remote. Then the app will be our recipe management app. Okay, so now when we do git push Heroku master and the branch is main. We've successfully deployed and we should be able to visit our app at this URL. So I'll copy that and let's open that in the browser. And visiting that in the browser takes us here. This is a fresh install of Hasura. So when we come to data, we don't see any tables here yet. This page is actually public. So anyone can access this page and begin to make tweaks to our database, which is what we do not want. So what Hasura allows is for us to configure an admin secret as an environment variable so that only those that have the admin secret can access this console. So we'll come back to our Heroku app and then under settings, config variables, we want to add one called Hasura GraphQL admin secrets. And then the value, I'll just copy, I'll just copy some random string here. Obviously don't do this in production, but just for the sake of our example, paste that in here and click add. Okay. And if we come back here, what happens when we refresh? We now get asked for that admin secret. So when we paste that admin secret in here and hit enter, and now we are logged in. You can see here under request headers that we've got this new request header called xhasura admin secret with that secret we pasted. If we wish to log out, we can click on settings and then click log out here. And then you can click log out, which brings us back here. So let me go ahead and log in again. Our next step will be migrating the schema from an existing Hasura database. Currently, when we come to the data 
tab, we have no tables defined here. So I'm going to go ahead and visit the other database I have. We see that under data, we've got two tables, recipes and ingredients. In order to perform the migration, we need to use a tool that Hasura provides called Hasura CLI. To install that, we can use npm to do it. So we do npm i hyphen g. We install it globally. And then it's called Hasura CLI. There are other ways of installing this as well. So I'll link to the documentation in the description so you can check that out. And then once the CLI is installed, you can go ahead and set up migrations by entering Hasura in it. And then the name of the directory in which we'll generate our migrations, I'll just call it RM migrations. And when we look in this direction, we've got a config.yaml file, which has got certain configuration information, such as the endpoint. We can configure various other things like the admin secrets and various other metadata are linked to the documentation on it. But for now, we'll set our endpoint to locals 8081, for instance, which is the Hasura database we created earlier. So in order to access that, we can use the Hasura CLI to access the console from that. So I'll cd into rm migrations and then let's run Hasura console. We should go ahead and open the console in our browser. So at locals 8081 and then under the data menu, we see our recipes and ingredients. And whenever we're done, we can just control C to end the process. Hasura allows us to perform a database dump via REST. So using the curl tool, I'm going to make a post request by entering curl and I'll enter the location flag, the request flag and make it post. And then we'll enter our endpoint and we want to visit v1 alpha1 forward slash pg dump. And we'll send some header information such as the content type, which is application slash JSON. And we'll send some data, which is our payload. So essentially what we're doing is behind the scenes, Hasura uses the PG dump tool, which comes bundled with Postgres. We're making a post request and as part of the post request, we're going to specify some arguments in the payload, which Hasura will pass as arguments when running the PG dump operation. So in our payload, we need to set a key called opts, which takes in a list of values. And then these are the values. And then what we want to do is we want to output the result of that into our seeds directory. And then I'll call the file schema.sql. And I'm going to link to the documentation with all of this. When we look in our seed schema.sql, we, we find the dump of our schema created. We can go ahead and apply it to our database. So to do that, we'll change this endpoint from localhost to our Heroku endpoint like so and then we also need to set the admin secret that we configured for our database so in the rm migrations directory we are now able to run hasura seeds apply okay that's a bit strange wasn't expecting that but I guess for now i can come in here and Disable this. Let's see if that works. All right, so it says seeds planted. So when we come back to the dashboard and I visit data, we see under untracked table of views, our recipes and ingredients tables listed here. So I click track all. Once it's done, we need to track these two as well. So I'll click track all for that one. And once it's done, we should be able to come on a GraphQL and we see that everything has been updated accordingly, including the documentation. All right. So even though we're able to set up the endpoint and admin secret in this fashion, when we commit our config.yaml file to source control, we are committing the admin secret as well, which is not good practice. We are also able to have a .env file with our admin secret and endpoint in there as well. 
So under iron migrations, I'll create a new file. I'll call it .env. And then here, we'll go ahead and configure our Hasura GraphQL endpoint, which will be this one. And then let's cut this from here. And I'll save this like that. And then we'll paste this here. And we want to configure Hasura GraphQL admin secret, like so. Which means that if I disable that, then we could have done Hasura seeds apply, and then we'll specify an env file. So we'll do .env. And that should technically go ahead and repeat the operation but I think it's not going to do it because we've already done it here. But if you were doing it the first time, we'll get, we should get info seeds planted. We are able to do Hasura console. And then I'll point to that env file, which will go ahead and it will launch the console in our browser, which is here like so. So even though it's localhost, it's pointing to our deployed Heroku app endpoint. Don't forget to add this file to git ignore. So under the project root, I'll create a .git ignore file, and then I'll add .env under here, because we don't want to be committing this to source control. So I can just close this. Let's go ahead and commit these changes. Oops, I was supposed to enable this endpoint actually. And let me go back. Looks like the git ignore file wasn't committed. So now that we've confirmed that we are able to access our Heroku dashboard from localhost using the Hasura tool, we can come to our Docker file and disable console access via the browser. So I will disable the console here in our Docker file as a security measure. So we can commit that. And let's go ahead and push that. Okay, so when we come to the browser and refresh, we are now given this response, which is a JSON response that the resource doesn't exist because we've disabled console access. And also since we are able to create a dump of our data, via post, we also need to disable that for our deployed app on Heroku or else anyone can run that same curl command that we ran earlier on and perform a database dump. So we will come to our Heroku dashboard and then under settings we'll add another config variable which is called Hasura GraphQL enable APIs and then the value would be GraphQL and metadata. So we only want to enable the GraphQL and metadata APIs and disable the other ones because we don't want anyone performing a PG dump on our data store. Okay, let me add that. So that means when we come to the console and attempt to perform a PG dump, this is what we get because our endpoint is now protected so let's see how we can connect to this from our Flutter app. So I'll go ahead and copy this env file into our Flutter app. So I'll just paste in here. And then I'll open our Flutter app in a new window. And in fact, I'll come back here and in our GraphQL client, we need to make a tweak to our init client function. So this init client takes in the URI, but also it takes in our admin secret. So under HTTP link, we will set a default headers and then we'll set the X Hasura admin secret, which will take the value of our secret 
that we pass in here and then I'll save this. So now we can return to our Flutter app. I'm going to add a new dependency to our Flutter project called flutter.env because we're working with .env files and then under the Flutter key in our passport.yaml file I'm going to configure a new asset which is our env file. So I'll come to our main.dart and I'll import our .env package and then in our main function we'll mark this as a sync and we'll do an await do .env.load and we'll load the .env file which means that in our init client function we can output the URL by doing .env.env which is a map and then in our env file we'll copy the GraphQL endpoint and we'll place that in here and then we need to pass in the secret as the second argument which is called the GraphQL admin secret and we're getting some analyzer problems so I can do command click or control click if you're on Windows so that the analyzer recognizes the second um, parameter we configured and that error should now disappear so let's go ahead and run this up let's go ahead and add our first entry I'll add a test recipe All right, so we've got our recipe added and then we can confirm it's in the database. So I'll do that in here. We've got our console running. And when we look in our database and under recipes, we see that our first recipe has been added. And also we can view the ingredients. So at least this confirms that our setup for our Flutter project is working correctly. And then let's go ahead and remove this recipe. And then when we go back to the database, we see that it's now empty. Same as the ingredients. Okay, I'm going to conclude the video here. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and also share this video. If you are not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on future tutorials. If you've got any questions or wish to make any feedback, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.